Good afternoon. Welcome to the Cathedral of Mary, our Queen, especially to our visitors and those joining our live stream. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and the readings can be found at number 1234. Our celebrant is Father Louis Bianco, assisted by Deacon Fritz Bauerschmidt. Our opening hymn is number 1086. This is my song, number 1086. Please stand and join in singing. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. How delighted and blessed I am to be here with you all, to have uh, the privilege of serving you as your new rector. I will say much more during homily time, but uh, for now just know I have so much joy in my heart. So brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only we cut in abasement of your Son has raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face, and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To you have I lifted up my eyes, you who dwell in the heavens, be whole like the eyes of slaves on the hand of their lords. Our eyes are 
eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Like the eyes of a servant on the hand of her mistress, so our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he show us his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all to fill is our soul with the scorn of the arrogant, the disdain of the proud. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell within me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. 
So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. May I say again how happy and blessed I am to be here with all of you. For those who don't know me, I'm Father Louis Bianco, the new rector here at the cathedral. For the past seven years, I was priest secretary to Archbishop Lori. But for my first four years as a priest, I was the associate here from 2005 to 2009. So many people these past few weeks have reached out to me and said, welcome home. And truly, this is home for me. The first assignment holds a special place in a priest's heart. I want you to know that I have prayed for all of you as parishioners every single day since I left here in 2009. And I hope that you feel as though this is your home also. This is your spiritual home. Father Justin Goff, the new associate here, and I, and our deacons will do everything in our power to help you in any way we can. We want to encounter the Lord with you. Our main job is to help get us all to heaven. I'm happy to be working alongside with Father Goff, deacons Fritz, Fritz Bauerschmidt and Bill Semft, the entire staff of the Cathedral Parish and School. There's some significant changes here with two new priests and a new director of music. I appreciate that change is difficult. It's difficult for us who are new and difficult for all of you as well. So I ask for your patience, but most of all, I ask for your prayers. This is all a bit overwhelming for me right now, but if I can survive seven years with the Archbishop, I can survive pretty much anything. So again, I'm ha very happy to be with you. It's a privilege to be here to serve you. So I thought um, on this first weekend here, I thought I'd see how the readings might apply to this unique situation of, you know, new rector coming in, but to a familiar, t you know, territory. So in the first reading, we heard the Lord, Lord say to his newly appointed, I am sending you to rebels who have rebelled against me. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. Okay, I'm not doing so good there. <laughs> so I went to the second reading. St. Paul says, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. I'm batting a thousand with the readings. Then I turned to the gospel. We heard that Jesus returned to a familiar place, but he was not able to perform any mighty deed there. Strike three with the readings. So I thought, well, let me not apply this to our situation this weekend. So the readings are really pointing uh, to the theme of Jesus being rejected by those who know him. He's gone back to Nazareth, back to his hometown, to a local synagogue in order to teach and to preach. Jesus' first homily, so to speak, was met with anger and rejection. I hope I don't offend you so much this, this afternoon. But the reason people didn't accept Jesus was because they knew him well. They knew his humanity, and so they thought, how can he do all of this? Even though Jesus was performing miracles, the people couldn't get themselves to believe in him because of their lack of faith. And so this is a parallel with the first reading, and that Ezekiel was sent to a rebellious people who would reject him also. In fact, Ezekiel's mission was to preach to a rebellious town of Jerusalem, which had become depraved and gravely sinful, and be rejected. God told Ezekiel that he would be rejected. And it would be 
the same leaders of Jerusalem that would condemn Jesus and hang him on a cross. Not the same people, because Ezekiel um, lived centuries before. But the leaders of Jerusalem rejected Ezekiel, and the leaders of Jerusalem at the time rejected our Lord. And so we see this parallel between Jesus and Ezekiel. The world, all these 2,000 plus years later, still rejects Jesus and the truths that he came to preach. And the world doesn't reject only Christ, but also those who come in his name, those who are called to witness to the truth. We are called to be those witnesses. By virtue of our baptism, we share in what is called the, the tre munera, the threefold office of Christ. As Jesus Christ is priest, prophet, and king, so we too are all priests, prophets, and kings in some way. We're prophets in that we are called to preach and teach the faith in all that we say and do. We have this mission from God by virtue of our baptism. We might face hostility and rejection, just as Jesus and Ezekiel did, but we have hope. In the second reading, St. Paul describes this burden placed on him. He said he was given a thorn in the flesh. Whatever that thorn was, he asked three times for it to be taken away. God rejected that request and said, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. We should never be afraid because the grace of God is sufficient for us. So if we're willing to fight for the truths of our faith and courageously live as disciples of Jesus Christ, God will give us that grace always. We just have to open ourselves to it. So let us not be afraid to take up this mission entrusted to us. God's grace is sufficient for us. The good of our families, our communities, and really the entire world depends on us as witnesses. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion, by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's holy church, planted as a sign of the kingdom in the midst of the nations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this country and for every nation, that all people might enjoy the blessings of peace and liberty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the scourge of racism and ethnic hatred which divides the human family, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth, our common home that God has given to us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in trouble, sorrow, or need, for the unborn and the elderly, the refugee and the prisoner, and for those who seek to care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the dying, especially those around the world suffering in this pandemic, and for all healthcare workers and medical researchers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal rest for those who have died, and pleading the intercessions of Mary our Queen together with all the saints, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the parishioners of the Cathedral Parish for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. May your mercy, we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 912. Make me a channel of your peace, number 912. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, 
and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domine Nostri, Jesu Christi Custodia, Arma Deum, Vitam Eternum. Communion hymn is number 819, I Has Not Seen, number 819.
of our faith and bear us up within your peaceful world. I has not seen, he has not heard, but God has ready for those who love him. Spirit of love, But a single breath, we flower and we fade. Yet all our days are in your hands, so we return in what your love has made. I has not seen, he has not heard. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a moment. I would very much like for Father Goff and Julie Grace Mails to introduce themselves to all of you. just like to echo Father Bianco's words of gratitude to the Lord, to the Archbishop, and to you all for the gracious welcome uh, that I've already received here and just being uh, here at Cathedral for a few days. Um, we'll have a, many opportunities to get to know each other, of course, but just so you can begin to do that, um, I am from the area. I uh, grew up in Towson and Lutherville. My parents, Lisa and Jerry, still live there. I'm sure you'll see them from time to time. I'm an only child, and my parents worked very hard to put me through the best Catholic school in the area, which is, of course, Calvert Hall, as I will 
uh, stake my claim there right away. Um, but it was really there at Calvert Hall and at my home parish, Immaculate Heart of Mary, that I began to discern a vocation to the priesthood. Um, and uh, through various involvements in music and the liturgy and service, I really felt that that was what God was calling me to do. And so I entered the seminary right out of high school, and I was attended uh, Our Lady of Providence in Rhode Island, and then was sent to Rome to the North American College. Um, I've just finished in Rome uh, my, my licentiate in theology, um, coming back just a few weeks ago. I was ordained in this church, a priest, last August, on the 22nd. And uh, the cathedral has always held a very special place in my heart. I remember the first time I was here, actually. It was almost 14 years ago, July 5th, 2007. It was for the dedica dedicatory recital for the new organ. Uh, I was a young organ student at the time, and I remember getting here early and wandering around and visiting all the side chapels and just being overwhelmed by the grandeur of the building. And over the course of the years, my love for the building has, has only deepened. And um, it's just such a blessing uh, to be assigned here for my first priestly assignment um, and to serve this wonderful community and school. Uh, I promise to give you everything that I've got, and I thank you in advance for your patience and for your forgiveness uh, when I fall short. But I do promise to you that I will do my best every day to be the best priest that I can be, the best father that I can be to this wonderful parish community and wonderful school. So may God bless you, and please know that you are in my prayers and have been in my prayers and will continue to be. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Julie Grace, and that is a little awkward sometimes. It's like Marianne, two first names. My father was called Julie and my mother was Grace, so those names were already taken. Um, I realize that my name and my face might be unfamiliar to many of you, but this beautiful space is not unfamiliar to me. Um, I moved here from Indiana about five years ago, and I have served Archbishop Laurie as the director of the Office of Divine Worship for the last five years. So I have been here um, at all of the archdiocesan liturgies together with Father Bianco um, behind the scenes. And for the last year and a half, I have also served as the director of music for those archdiocesan liturgies. Um, I too graduated from a Catholic high school. Probably none of you have heard of it. It's in Indiana, but it's Central Catholic Indiana. I also grew up at a cathedral parish, um, and I understand the great privilege and responsibility of being the Mother Church of the Archdiocese. So I very much look forward uh, to getting to know all of you, to working with Father Bianco and with Father Goff, um, to not come in again and change things. Um, as Father Bianco said, we understand that there is a huge amount of change in a very short period of time. My goal is to come in and to listen to you, to talk to you, to find even more beauty than I see in this unbelievable space, but to find beauty in the spirit of the community of the Arch, uh, excuse me, of the Cathedral of Mary Our Queen, and together use our skills to add even more beauty to the music ministries that exist. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but the most important instrument in the Roman Catholic Church is not the organ, but it is the voice of the assembly. So together, hopefully, we can join um, and enhance even more the sound when we sing and praise God together. So you know, um, I do have credentials. Um, I graduated from Indiana University Conservatory of Music a few years ago, and I have a master's degree in sacred music um, and liturgical theology. I worked in the Diocese of Lafayette in Indiana for the better part of 20 years as the cathedral music director in the church in which I grew up. Um, I was also the diocesan director of music and the director of the Office of Divine Worship. So again, um, I will pray for you every day. I hope you will also pray for us as we come together as a worshiping community and praise the Lord through song and liturgy. Thank you. If um, 
you recognize Father Goff is because, I don't know if you remember that photo of um, a seminarian handing Lamar Jackson's jersey to the Pope. We were uh, in Rome a couple Decembers ago for the Ad Limina visit, and Father Goff shamelessly handed the Pope that jersey. So that's maybe where you have seen him before as well. Please have a, a delightful Fourth uh, of July holiday weekend. I hope it is restful and very safe uh, for all of you as you celebrate with family and friends. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn is number 1087, America the Beautiful, number 1087. Yeah.